We're getting started on the animal study. This is our sixth animal with the system. Uh, the third animal that uh, we've been able to do the time trial on. Hopefully everything goes well. Yeah. Things have been getting faster. Yesterday's animal we were able to do in uh, 11 minutes. Do some kind of gangster pose? Yeah, you're looking good. This is the user interface for the investigational ablation system. It has an intuitive user interface that allows you to select electroporation, RF ablation, and a RF puncture modality. How about some background? Electroporation, pulsed electric field, and direct current ablation all work by creating a very strong and very brief electric field within the tissue. The electrostatic stress can transiently open the cell membrane, allowing unfettered movement of small molecules and peptides into and out of the cell. Under the right circumstances, this leads to a metabolic insult resulting in cell death. Cardiac myocytes are exquisitely sensitive to insults impacting cellular energetics. This helps explain the tissue selectivity and favorable healing observed in cardiac electroporation lesions. The engineering of this investigational ablation system integrates some very novel technologies into a familiar platform that delivers both radiofrequency ablation and electroporation. Over the last decade, there has been a renewed interest in using pulse electric field to treat cardiac arrhythmias. Publication of early clinical trials for pulmonary vein isolation and a number of other applications has really spurred competition between every major company in the ablation space. Now we have a race.
It took approximately 13 minutes to complete all three steps, really highlighting the value of having a non-contact mapping system. Here you see a single position non-contact map with CS pacing, demonstrating a clear line of a block between the inferior vena cava and the tricuspid annulus. Animals were survived another 10 to 14 days with a terminal study where we remapped the right atria and the CTI line to check for durability. And in this example, we see persistence of the bi-directional block across the CTI line. Gross pathology demonstrated lesions that were seen along the atria and the inferior vena cava. The ventricle was sectioned so that we could best preserve the cava tricuspid isthmus and visualize it from the perspective of the right ventricle. You can see that these um, are much better TTC staining. So you can see down into the tri the, the inferior vena cava right there, that light kind of zone in the background. This is a close up of that same area looking from the tricuspid valve down into the inferior vena cava. Notice that pale area marked by CTI where the lesion set is. Histology confirms a contiguous linear lesion from the tricuspid valve to the inferior vena cava. At greater magnification uh, you can see the blood vessels are intact, the nerve fibers are intact, yet all the myocytes have been replaced by fibroblasts findings are most consistent with electroporation mediated injury.